Hi, how's everybody doing today? Uh, Clint the audio slash photo slash bike guy here. I just wanted to show you the finished result um, or the nearly finished result of the mountain bike uh, touring bike conversion. So not the ideal touring bike, but it's what I had. So um, I was turning it into a touring bike because I didn't do mountain biking for many years been like 27 years although I've since done a couple rides um, but here's what uh, here's what I got uh, I was just kind of uh, commuting around and bringing a lunch and stopping at bike shops and needed some space for bike parts and stuff like that so um, so this is what I got built up went with platform pedals just for the flexibility of having a shoe you can walk in I got a video on these these are the Alston uh, pedals. Uh, I am around 200 pounds. They do flex a little bit, but so far no failures, no problems. Uh, they're much better than the polymer pedals I started with. Uh, I was mounting a bike pump right here, and since I have the trunk bag, I just slide it in the top pocket. Uh, this is a Topeak uh, trunk bag that has the panniers that fold out of the sides. Uh, it has a water bottle pouch in the back, although if you hit a bump, you got to be careful what kind of bottle you put in here because this little elastic thing isn't enough. You can eject your bottle out and then you're down the road potentially with a rather expensive bottle. This is not, so I would say if you put a bottle in there, put a cheap one just in case you lose it. On the back I've got the Knight Rider Saber 110. Uh, this gets very bright. It has several flash modes to annoy the people behind you. Um, and the battery lasts a long time. So that lets you get seen in the dark. I didn't have it one time, or actually I had that, but I didn't have the front one time and a car almost hit me. Uh, let's see, for the seat post, I got the Cane Creek Thudbuster. This is the shorter travel one, the current one, but the shorter travel. Uh, I've I've been loving it actually it's it's like adding rear suspension almost I have an elastomer that's uh, this is the two two dot one for my weight I'm supposed to have the three dot and I'm borderline on the four dot but the two dot is actually nice and comfortable and I don't see any reason to put the uh, the firmer one in I'm not going for maximum pedaling efficiency here I'm going for comfort because I have two herniated discs in my back uh, this seat I've kind of settled on uh, as a cutout in it. This is a bike roux. It's pretty much nylon or vinyl rather uh, cover. Uh, I had a Brooks on here. I think I ordered two narrow. I got the Brooks narrow. I should have got the Brooks standard. I think the Brooks standard would have been perfect for this. Uh, the narrow it just wasn't uh, breaking in fast enough for me. I swapped it back and forth. It would be fine but um, with all the weight I've added here, the, this one's a little bit lighter and it's more comfortable. Uh, the one catch is here, you don't want to park this in the sun because when you come back to it, the vinyl will be uh, really hot and it'll uh, steam your butt crack. Um, so for tires, I got the WBT Thick Slicks. They are pretty stylish. I was going for a higher volume tire and these are like 2.1. You can run them at 40, 50 PSI, and uh, it's like adding a bit of uh, comfort to the ride. They also grip like crazy, and the they're large like a mountain bike tire, but they don't have the tread, so they really don't hold you back as far as rolling resistance goes. Um, they seem to roll pretty smooth, and they don't do that sizzling in the, uh, in the wind that a treaded tire would do. On the back, this rack here is the... Um, the Topeak rack that's for the mounting system that this bag uh, attaches to and this is the 29er rack for non-disc bikes. The ones they have now they come out here and they're all for disc you know disc bikes but they stick out really wide and most of the disc bikes you don't even need that clearance. You see over here it's supposed to clear for the disc. I got tons of room to clear the disc um, but they make them like that 
that come way out and then go up to clear calipers, I think, if there's calipers mounted on the back. Uh, on this bike, the caliper is within the rear triangle there. So, it, as are a lot of bikes. So if you have a caliper within the triangle, we don't need that big wide disc mount. That width pushes your panniers out. It widens the whole thing. So, I don't think they make this one anymore. But I found this on clearance at a bike shop for 28 bucks for that rack. So, I was like, okay, I will take that. I was going to get a Ortlieb and uh, it didn't fit. Uh, the Ortlieb did not fit on this bike. It was sitting right on the tire. Like it might fit a road bike tire, that 700C, but it will not fit a 29er mountain bike tire. Uh, you have to run these braces all the way out, as far out as they'll go, to fit this bike. This is a 19 and a half inch Trek frame, the uh, Excalibur 8. Uh, up front here, I've got I wanted a better grip situation. Uh, I did go to a steeper stem, but then uh, I started feeling a little cramped. I went with shorter and steeper, like a 17 degree, so I ended up going, as I got fitter, uh, I missed the factory stem, so I went back to the Bontrager. I think that's a 90 millimeter and about a 6 degree. Uh, for the grips, uh, my palms, you know, would start to get a little little painful on long rides, so uh, I ordered these Ergon GP3s. The threes have this kind of short stubby barn, and I think that's probably the perfect length. Um, th th much more uh, pressure relief by having the wide palm swell area. Uh, just one note that you want to have these at the, at the correct uh, rotation on the bar, because if you're off by a degree or two, you'll get actually more pressure on your palms and all you have to do is rotate it just a smidge and tighten it back down and then you're perfect. Uh, up here I've got the stem mount Wahoo. Uh, the element, I forget what it is, element bolt or something, what, the color one, uh, which is very cool. It uploads right to Strava and so you can keep track of all your workouts. I've got the Knight Rider Lumina 1000 Boost headlight. As you can see here, this doesn't really work because this blocks it, so I need some kind of solution for that, whether it's a high-mounted bracket or, in reality, I think it would be ideal if some kind of bracket mounted under here, and then you could have your headlight down here, and it would miss your bag completely and uh, light the whole road in front of you. Uh, so it's front suspension rock shock. Uh, that's working well. I do have the lockout control, so when I stand to climb, I can not turn it into a pogo stick. Uh, the front bag is the bike case. Still have this on. I actually just put this on for the video. I haven't used it yet. Uh, I'm using a salsa, uh, I forget what they call this, anything kind of rack that mounts to the handlebar. It's really heavy duty and it's it's got some weight to it too, but I get the feeling that you can mount whatever you want to here and it's not going to break. So you could mount a tent up here. I wanted a little bag for lunch to be able to carry that with me. Then I could put my phone or a map or something up here that I can see. Uh, and it's just big enough to access phone, wallet, keys, um, power bars, cliff bars, stuff like that. Um, but I just finished this build, or was about finished with the build. And uh, that's when uh, I got gravel bike parts and was ready to build my gravel bike. So uh, I'm really not going to use it in this capacity anymore. Uh, so I am going to break it down and turn it back into a mountain bike. So um, because my gravel bike can take over these duties. Uh, so I just wanted to make this video and show you before, before I did all that. Uh, so it came out pretty cool. Got got a good amount of miles on this thing, uh, but riding with friends that had gravel bikes, uh, it definitely was not as efficient. Uh, these are the like formula hubs. They're a loose ball hub. I don't think they have any grease in them from the factory. Uh, they're pretty gritty. Uh, the tire is definitely not as fast as a thinner gravel bike tire, and the bike overall is just heavy. It's you know it's about 10 pounds heavier than uh, your typical uh, gravel bike now. Uh, the tires I'm going to be putting on it 
you can see the bike shop wall over here is growing, uh, are the uh, Vittoria Mezcals, uh, but the fat ones. These are the 29 by 2.35. Uh, and I'm going to run tubeless, so I picked up the uh, rim strips here. Uh, these are the Bontrager ones that fit those rims exactly. Um, but uh, it is Thanksgiving. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, so I think it for the year is pretty much over here. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can adapt this to these little guys that I just picked up. Uh, I got a Wahoo... Uh, kicker trainer. This is a fourth gen. I got this at an auction so um, with the climb attachment for a few hundred bucks so uh, so I can put some miles on in the winter. I don't know. We'll see if I use this or the uh, bike at the gym more. So that's that. Thanks for watching. Uh, you guys have a good one. We'll see ya.